Well hello there my dear friends, welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. So today's video we will be fettling some pheasant. Ha <laughs> ha try and say that after a few bevies. So what we're going to be doing then is make a fantastic dish with these lovely pheasant thighs. Obviously if you breast your pheasants out, just take the breasts off, you're left with the legs. It's always hard to find something to do with them. So what I do is take the drumsticks off, separate the drumstick and thigh, and you're left with this beautiful piece of meat. As you can see, these pheasants, the, the season just gone and well fed. So what we're going to be doing then is a take on the classic French chicken chasseur. And we're going to make, yes, you guessed it, pheasant chasseur. So what differentiates chasseur from, say, coco van? Because for all intents and purposes, it is pretty much the same dish. Is Coco Van uses red wine, Chasseur uses white. So, what we have before your very eyes is eight pheasant thighs, some lovely fresh thyme. Thyme and tide waits for no man. Got about 250 ml of white plonk. I've got some smoked pancetta here. You can use smoked bacon, no problem whatsoever. I've got two fat garlic cloves chopped roughly, two tablespoons of tomato puree, one rustically chopped onion. I like it like that. I like to see it in the finished dish. It's about 200 grams of button mushrooms. And in this little cracker, we got a pint of chicken stock. Do you remember when milk used to come in then? Please rinse and return to your milkman. Hey, why ever did they go over to plastic? Anywho, I digress. There is our recipe list, ingredients, what we need to do then first off. As per usual, adding colour to the meat. Very, very simple. Now you know the drill by now. Adding colour to any stew, any braise, will add colour to the finished dish, but caramelising and all those bits of lovely sticky meat that sticks to the bottom is all part of how you turn just an average stew casserole into something special. So just some flour, put a bit more salt and pepper in. Come on, you beauty. Give it a mix. All we do is get those in. And of course, this will help build up that crust. Also thicken it. Very simple. And then it's over. To the stove. We have fire. So in a decent casserole dish stew pot, one that could go in the oven, a little bit of oil. So I have got my oven preheating gas mark for, I think it's about 160 degrees C, 140 degrees C if it's fan assisted. And you may or may not have heard me talk about this before, about building up like a pyramid, these layers of flavour. So here's basically what you do. Let that get a bit warm. I'm going to put my pancetta smoked bacon in. And I'm just going to get that nice and crispy. That will release its fat, its smokiness. So we've... We will take that out of the pan, and of course, we're left with that lovely, smoky, bacony fat. Then we will fry our pheasant in it. So we're laying another flavour on top, then take the pheasant out, and then we will put in our garlic and our onions. And that's what I mean about stacking up the flavours. Very simple, but it makes a lot, a lot of difference. So yeah, just got to get crispy, man. So 
what they say in New York, that looking poi effect. So we get them out. If you look in there, you can see the remnants of the bacon. So next then, that seasoned pheasant thigh. This is where you need to take your time. Don't crowd the pan. Just put them in and let them do their thing. So we get our nicely browned pheasant thighs out. So what we got in here then? We got that lovely bacon and then the bits of pheasanty flour. Next it's in with your on your arms. So I've turned the heat right down now. I don't want these to brown. I just want to soften these. So take your time. About 10 minutes. until they become nice and translucent. Okay, my friends, there are a few aromas that are guaranteed to send a man mad. The smell of frying bacon, the dependable twinning of frying garlic and onions, and of course, le vieille bal on my girl's neck. Anywho, we've got our onion and garlic softening so we just cook that garlic out so it's not too bitter or acrid and then in with our tomato puree tomato paste again just need to cook this out for a minute or so because that will be a bit raw again a little bit acrid so just give that a minute i'm going to put the heat up a bit under that wonderful so now it's in with the plonk now some recipes call for tin tomatoes i don't think you need it Like I said, this is not a pheasant au van, coco van, it's white wine. So this tomato puree will be enough. What I need to do is fire the heat up and reduce said wine. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. As you can see, that's come down quite a lot. It's got nice and thick now. What I'm going to do is just turn that heat down. Reintroduce old Fezzy Wezzy Woo Wah. Knock my camera. The things us YouTubers go through. Working around these bloody tripods. Anyway, the all important resting juices. bedding in now in with our stock I've got a pint of stock you may need pint and a half two pints it wants to just be covering oh, that went a bad guess so just give that a little bit of love nice in with our pancetta now two schools of thought you can brown off your mushrooms and put them in or what I always do just put them in raw keeps their integrity a bit more a bit more shape but yeah that's how easy that dish is 
So I've got some pathetic excuses for bay leaves. Now go in me sprig of thyme. Turn the heat up. Bring it to a gentle simmer. Then we'll get it in the oven for anywhere between a, an hour and a half to two and a half hours. Obviously if it was chicken it would do real a lot quicker, hour and a half, but with this being pheasant and it's lean and mean it might take a little bit longer. The end is falling off my spatula man. <laughs> the oven we go. So after two hours, it looks like that. Just look how thick and rich that is. Oh, it's wonderful as you can see. It's falling off the bone. So what I'm going to do is finish it with a little bit of fresh parsley just to liven it up a bit and to cut through the richness I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice just give that a little gentle stir it looks absolutely monumental oh, what a beautiful beautiful rich thick stew that is. Time to serve up. there we have it wonderful pheasant chasseur how good does that look smells absolutely amazing so it's always going to be notoriously hard to make a stew look sexy Let's have a look at this meat should be able to just peel it off the bone look hey eh? Can't wait to get in there and try it. So I've got a bit of broccoli as some token veg, but it's the meat and that sauce I want to try. I just realised I'm wading in with a spoon. It just tastes amazing. Bit uncouth, but it's a chef's prerogative. I'm gonna have a bit of that as well. Mmm. It's one of my favourite dishes. Let me just show you that again. So we know how tough a pheasant thigh is. So you can just see how easily that picks apart. Anyway, I've been playing with my food enough. I'm going to eat some more of this and we'll sum it up. While it's all over, bar the shouting or the shrooming. Get my shrooms, man. Absolutely wonderful. It's such a great dish. Mm. So if you've liked what you see here today on the SRP, please click subscribe. I think a button will come up down here somewhere if I can get it to work. Also check me out on my social media, on my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at the Scott Reed Project. 
And if you would like to have the channel along, which I would love you to do, no pressure, check out my Patreon page. But until next time, my friends, obviously, if you cannot get pheasant thighs, just use good old chicken drumsticks and thighs. Use the same method, same ingredients, and you're being like Flynn, my friend. Take care. See you soon. I was out of here.